So how about if we just go around uh, as people show up? Um, Ann Walker, why don't we start with you and then you pick the next person. Just oh, thank you. Hi, I'm Ann Walker and I, um, I live in Erie, Pennsylvania. Great. And I pick Margaret. Good morning, I'm Margaret Yao, and I'm phoning in from Washington, DC. Uh, let me go to um, Athena. Hello, my name is Athena Angeluda, and I'm calling from Athens, Greece. Wow. And who are you picking? I'm picking Mark. Hi everyone, I'm Mark Brewer. I'm calling in from Rochester, New York. And I'm going to pick uh, Sanjay. Thanks, Mark. I'm Sanjay. Hello, everyone. I'm dialing in from Houston. Hi, Melissa. Special hi, hi to you. Nice to see you. <laughs> hi, everyone. Where should we go next, Sanjay? Yeah, I, I, I pick Nina. Oh, okay. Um, um, I'm actually trying. I'm going to be the moderator here in a little while. Um, my name is Nina, and I I um I live in Sweden. And um, I actually attended one of the first uh, the first uh, module of this program, so I'm I'm here also to do that to talk about that a little bit. And now I'm picking Stavrula. If you oh, want to say can... something, Stavrula. <laughs> Stavrula, we cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you better. hear me? Yeah. Okay. okay, hello to everyone. I'm sorry for being late. I just got back from work. Uh, I'm, I live in Athens. Uh, Athena Ageluda uh, is my friend. <laughs> She's mm. the one that uh, proposed, uh, suggested to me that I follow this, uh, enter this program. I'm uh, studying for the ACC program. Great. And Great. I'm here to learn from all the experienced in the field. Perfect. Oop. Who do you want to pick? Maybe you don't know I because don't know. you haven't you already joined. joined. So, I, don't know. I think it's Belinda that's left. Belinda right? and Manolis. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, Belinda here. Um, I'm living in Muscat, Oman. Thank you. Hi, Belinda. Welcome back. So who are you picking? I think it's only Manolis left now. Uh, I'm picking Manolis. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah. <laughs> good choice. Uh, Belinda, so uh, good evening or good afternoon or I don't know what time is it there. <laughs> you are. Uh, my name is Manolis and I live in Athens, Greece. All right. Thank you, Manolis. Yeah, well, I, I said short, I introduced myself as being the moderator here today. And uh, who are you, Melissa? Uh, I am Melissa Kelly McCabe. I am in upstate New York. Mark and I are about 50 miles, so about 100 and change kilometers away from each other. And uh, I will be spending some time um, talking about coaching mastery today with all of you and with my esteemed colleague, Angela Sterlopas. Thank you very much, Melissa. I guess I am Angelo Lopez. I live in Athens, Greece, and um, we have worked together with and are still working for this program, which is called the Masterful Coach. And I'll be happy to share uh, a bit of my, our experience and um, see how does that uh, resonate with you or what are your thoughts about what we will be sharing today. Great. And I see there's a new one who has just joined. Great. Padaskevi. Padaskevi? Yeah. Can you hear us, Padaskevi? Yes, I can hear you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Where, are you, where are you calling from? Uh, right now, I'm in Lithuania. Oh, Great. wow. Okay. Lovely. Yeah, lovely. And welcome to this meeting. Okay, so. Um, uh, let's get started then. So, um, in brief summary, Mandessa, what is this program that we're going to talk about? Well, um, a few years ago, Angelos and I got together and said, it, in many different conversations, said, you know, this is nuts. 
that there's this thing called coaching mastery. And um, so many people that we interact with um, are coaching at sort of a shallow level. And so it, not going deep enough. And that's evidenced by, if you're part of the ICF, 80% of the people who go for a, an MCC or a mastery level of coaching fail it the first time, fail the exam the first time in terms of their coaching ability. So um, we got together and said, you know, we think we know how to help coaches look at a deeper level, both in themselves and in others. And whether somebody's going for an MCC or not, we think that our clients, the clients in the world, the people we are coaching deserve to have a skill level where the coach knows how to be at a deeper level, a deeper level in terms of their own self and their own presence and a deeper perspective when they're coaching their clients. So that's where this whole thing started out. So um, I will say that I, I have a friend that says, Melissa, you think everything is better if you travel to some other place. And so I do. And so we put together an adventure experience. And so uh, we also said, you know what? Why the heck sit on Zoom all the time when you can see the world? So um, the second piece of this was, well, what the heck? If we, What if we all got together in different places in the world and see a little bit of the world at the same time that we're hanging out with uh, other people who want to learn master mastery and coaching at this level. So that's where this whole thing came from. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Melissa. And what, what would you like to add to that, Angelos? What are your thoughts, your thoughts about this? Well, not much. I think Melissa covered it pretty well. Uh, one thing that I'd like to say is that um, we decided that we can do it now that the world is open again after the pandemic. I mean, as Melissa said earlier, we have been designing that for a long, long time. But I think um, the idea of traveling from location to location first, it gives, it blends, it gives us a different kind of experience. It triggers different kind of uh, uh, awareness of how we perceive things around the culture of who we are in different places with different people. And I think also the magic of meeting each other inside a group with which you can have peers, you can network, exchange ideas and reflections, and at the same time meeting in the same time zone is uh, yes. very magical in one sense. <laughs> <laughs> we eat at the same time, we sleep at the same time. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Great. Eva, hello. We see yeah. you. I saw that Eva Eva joined too. Hi, Eva. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Yes, can you see me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. we can. Okay. Sorry, I had some connection issues. I'm sorry for the delay. No worries. No worries. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Welcome to, nice to, be to here. this Thank meeting. You. Yeah. Well, that's a that's another great point. When you're meeting each other face to face in the same location, you never have connection issues. <laughs> <laughs> and you are on mute, which was the most common sentence, I think, two years ago. Yeah, we said. That's right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, so I would like to ask the participants if you start uh, thinking a bit here, what when you think about the word mastery? What comes to your mind? I would like you to write down something, some uh, words that you get or some thoughts that you get when you heard the word, when you hear the word mastery. You want us to put it in the chat? No, you can just write it down for yourself to start with.
You can look up when you're done so that we know. Who needs more time? Speak out now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess no one needs more time. So I, I wanna ask the I wanna get ask Angelos here. What is mastery for you? How, what would you define it? Well, for me, it's the continuous and intentional process of acquiring and refining uh, your sense of identity, who you are as you're maturing, as you're relating, as you're understanding yourself, how you're growing, how you're developing yourself professionally, but also personally. And I think there's a dialogue between those two, who you are personally and who you are professionally. In the sense, who you are is how you coach. So defining that, refining that, and um, unfolding that, unfolding, understanding better who you are uh, and where you need to go, where you are in the world, or where you are in your hero's journey as well. It's uh, it's in the process of becoming uh, someone who is acquiring mastery. Back to you, hmm. Nina. Oh, thank you, Angelos. What well, can you? What, would you define it, Melissa? Yeah, I kind of look at it, I mean, similarly and a little bit differently. So, um, yeah, it's a journey, just as you're saying, Angelos, like this, it's a, it's elusive. It doesn't necessarily, you don't necessarily ever get to the end point. So I appreciate that um, one of the, one of the things you'll notice about Angelos and me is that we don't look at the same, the, everything the same way. So um, it's like point counterpoint sometimes. Um, I also look at this thing of mastery as it it does have a destination, sort of. It, there is um, a, a more full command or understanding that's possible. So when I think about mastery, I think about having an ex, a set an expertise, um, some um, some skill. And, uh, and and the ICF would agree in terms of behavior, but some skill that's sort of definable. So though it may be in some ways a way off and a process, I think that there is a destination around mastery. Yeah, there's some continual improvement that can happen. And at the same time, I think that there's, there's uh, maybe a minimum level that says beyond that, is in the realm of mastery um, earlier than that is in the realm of something else but not mastery so i think that that um, and i think we have a, a slide to show that angelos that mastery is i think for us for me it's more of a noun and angelos i think for you it's more of a verb <clears throat> right yeah so do you want to elaborate on that or? Well, I guess I'd be curious to know, um, based on the things that both Angelos and I are saying, what's pinging for people who are participating um, in terms of what you wrote down? So yeah. how do you look at it? Yeah. What did you write down? Yes. Now I can't see your name. Is it Anne, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> and Anne, you are on mute. Uh, Angel, you can probably stop share so we can yeah. chat with people. Um, I When you mentioned the word mastery, I got this visual of um, the golf swing. And um, so it's never perfect and you're always working on it. Um, but when you do it really well, it looks effortless and it it's done with ease um, and you're confident when you're doing it and there's no tension in the swing. Um, but then to take that a little bit further is you can still have all of that, you know, perfect swing, effortless, all that, and you could still what we call shankopotamus, the ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what, and so that it lands somewhere that you didn't expect it or want it to land. And then I kind of relate that back to if you're a masterful coach, you could be doing it with ease, but it may not land with the 
person the way you intended it or or the way they needed it to. So it's it's kind of an ongoing learning journey. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful metaphor. Thank you, and love that. You're welcome. Yeah, absolutely. So any any other comments here? Yeah, we have a couple of hands up. It looks like yeah, Margaret yeah. and uh, Stavros. Uh, Margaret. Stavros. Stavros was first. Stavros. No, Stavrula. Stavrula. <laughs> you you're first. You're on. And I think you're on mute. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so uh, for me, um, a mastery, I don't think it's um, it's not being the best in the world because it's something that I don't know if uh, someone can achieve it. But I would rather say that uh, it's reaching one's highest potential uh, mm -hmm. while uh, continually striving for uh, the improvement in the field that we are talking about. For, for example, now it's uh, the coaching. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing that, Stavula. Thank you. Uh, and Margaret? Um, I see it as, for me, it's aspirational. And I, I look at it as um, having all the knowledge, ideas, and creativity at my fingertips or the tip, tip of my tongue so that I can be relaxed and fully present and creative with my clients so it's a little bit of both the noun and the verb i think yeah 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 great yeah and many of you are saying also that it's it's a journey right it's a continuing journey maybe it's not even possible to be a master but it's a journey to always become better yeah so any, do you want to comment? Oh, sorry, Manolis. Thank you, thank you. Uh, to my perception, um, coaching is uh, an art, uh, is, uh, a is a relationship with the self and others, and also it's a process, oh, okay? So a coach, needs several essential skills and competencies, very well defined by ICF and other organizations. Uh, and uh, when I think of mastery, it comes to my vision, the symphonic orchestra with a maestro, mm -hmm. who is in a similar position, creating art and relationship with the orchestra and the, and the uh, audience in a process of producing something very beautiful for everyone. Another lovely metaphor. Thank you for sharing that. OK, there was somebody else here, Sanjay, I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so mastery, I mean, it, it, it evokes images and sensations of uh, of something magical, mysterious, effortless. Where it's like a dance where uh, the the performer becomes the performance, and the performance is nothing but just being. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Just being. Yes. 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 Hmm. Mm. So much. So many wonderful comments here. Anything you would like to add here, Melissa or Angelos? When you hear all these beautiful insights. Yeah. Um. What gets me excited is the 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 dance, the, the dance interplay, thing. the the relational field that it is that we are co-creating the uh, dialogue, the conversation in a way that um, is fulfilling both for the client and for the coach. And it's like there's a give and take, there's a flow between the, it, the, the almost alchemy or the, the magic, using the word that was just brought up, the magic of it is when it is in that place of effortlessness and um, 
ease and um, access to all of the resources that I as coach and the client have. And so um, I'm, I got a little bubble in my tummy as I'm listening to people talk about this idea of mastery. Yeah. I remember when I went, when, was, went to my first uh, ICF meeting, that we saw a live coaching. It was an MCC coaching live, and I was a fresh ACC. And I just, like, like you say, like you, a lot of you say that it's effortless. It's, you know, these simple questions, and he's sort of boom, 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 like, and, and it was just effortless, but I could, I got this vision of a, of a um, figure skating because it's really hard, but it looks so easy. <laughs> and at that point I found this is really, it is really hard to get there, what, what this person is, but yeah. So it's the journey, right? I yeah. think I'm a bit closer now, even though I'm not a figure skater. Mark, you want to say something? So Melissa, I have a question based on what you just said. So mm -hmm. the thought that came to my mind around a question was, uh, is mastery also a co-creative process so yeah. that it's not like where i just go step aside and and do my work i'm on a treadmill sorry so <laughs> i'm gonna step aside do my work and then come back and give that mastery to others but there's a, a kind of a, a symbiotic synergistic relationship that's going on in that process of say coaching that then co-creates some of that masterfulness yeah. Um, I, I think so, oh. though I think that it's not led by the client. I mean, the coaching session is led by the client, but mastery is not led by the client. Mastery is led by the coach as an invitation. And so maybe broadening our definition a bit to say, you know, that the the session demonstrated mastery, that that the coach has the capa capacity and the capability the client has the, the fodder and the invitation to lead the session, and that session then demonstrates mastery that is co-created. Yeah, if I, if I could add something to that, I would say that, yes, as, um, as Melissa just said, uh, the coach has to be in some kind of a level, a mastery level, uh, in order to create that container where, where the client can relate in, a, in an equal partnership, as the ICF says, or in a synergistic level, symbiotic, as Mark just pointed out. And I think that's I important think that, to the, the to be or become a coach who has the intention and the capability and the artistry to be that person in the moment. As uh, someone said earlier, it's effortless. I would say it looks effortless. It's not really effortless, but it, it, the the mass the level of mastery of the coach makes that or presents that gift to make that appearing as effortless as an organic conversation, which just flows in the moment together with the client, with the client leading the way and in service of the client and what the client wants to achieve and become on a level that is meaningful for the client. Now I am uh, including ICF language for <laughs> sure, but it's always part of the equation. Yes. Hmm. Thanks for all the sharing here. Wonderful. So um, now when you have done, well, you started the program now, Melissa and Angelos, um, when you started it was, what was your intention uh, to do it when you did it? Yes, I, I could start with that, Melissa, is that okay? Great. And, sure. Uh, yes, we have prepared us a few slides. So if I can share that, if, if that's okay with everyone. Um, so yes, so that's in service of not of the question to answer a different question, not what is mastery, but how do I get there? Uh, and we and be, because we wanted this to be eligible, this program to be eligible for a, an ICF level three accreditation, we had not. It's not that we didn't want that, but we had to make it very relevant in service of defining honing masterful coaching skills 
and prepare for the MCC in order to become an ICF level three program, uh, which means that we, of course, we included a lot of practice and a lot of mentor coaching. Now we have the um, the evidence that the ICF has created and provided with the MCC bars. We now have different um, assessing tools uh, after the PCC markers. We also have the ACC bars and now we have the MCC bars as well. So that's another tool in our toolbox. It's not the only tool, but we want to create that so people can understand better, relate and uh, hone intentionally, defining and refining um, who they are as coaches on that skill. But we didn't want to limit ourselves. We didn't want to limit the experience of the program uh, and we didn't want to, ex to, to limit uh, what we are offering uh, in this uh, in this um, in this training slash retreats program, so we wanted to include much more elements, uh, which is which are somehow linked to a couple of things that I mentioned earlier. But who I am I becoming, and uh, how do I become more aware and perhaps more intentional about how am I growing? So we have included a number of different uh, offerings or um, triggers, uh, invitations to explore different approaches uh, that is available in the literature in a way that makes meaning and that can be offered to the, the participants so they can decide what they want to combine, include in the way they are thinking about themselves, who they are personally, who they are professionally. And uh, Melissa, um, do you want to continue from here? Yeah, I will continue. And I think that it's worth pointing out that the paradigm here is um, that there are, if we just look at ICF, there are two things that people need in order to become an MCC. One is to actually be coaching at this deep level, and the other is a, a set of hours of experience. We believe and set this program up that anybody or anybody who is a good coach can be a masterful coach, even if they don't have the number of hours. And so that's really the audience that we're talking about here. And we, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. So it's about, like Angelo said, it's about masterful coaching skills. And at the same time, it's about adventure. And it's about experiencing different cultures in different places and spaces. And so we have chosen the places that we go carefully to um, have a places where there's a blending of cultures, where there's a, a, a way to sample the culture and the food and the richness of nature around us. So the um, we see that as, yes, there's, uh, rich personal discovery and growth. And there's also an, an eye opening and awareness of what's going on around me in the culture that I'm in, in the space that I'm in, that also informs who I am. So um, how does that link to biases I might have come in with? And what can I learn now from that? And so on. So our, we're very intentional about the places that we go and what they mean relative to the personal discovery and growth that we're, um, we're inviting. And the last point of, is that the people who assemble are um, interested, you know, the, the common denominator is not, oh, I want to get MCC uh, level. The common denominator is how can I be with other people who want to do deep personal discovery, who want to have, um, coach and get experience coaching in the midst of other coaches who have different life experiences, different training experiences, different models that they use, so that 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 um, as a participant, I am able to take advantage of the gifts and offerings of all of these different people, and then how do I make it my own? So the 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 piece that I think is uh, one of the things that we set out to do is 
how do we invite pe how do we expose people to a whole variety of different experiences so that they can make it their own in whatever way that they utilize coaching some are leaders that just use coaching skills some are professional coaches inside organizations some are professional coaches outside organizations some are volunteer coaches so how can how can we expose people to a whole variety of different skills behaviors personal discovery experiences um, in a way that they can make it their own and utilize this for their own life and their own coaching. So that's what we really set out to do, Nina. Mm. Yeah. And since I was there the first time, I can share that, the first module. Um, that is really a good summary of what I experienced um, in, in the first uh, module. We were in Ronda in Spain. Uh, for three days, three and a half days, yeah, and um, this this level of of the participants is just unusual. I must say, it was unbelievably fulfilling to be around people that have very skilled coaches, and the discussions and the the when you talk to people, not just in in class but also outside when you you know take a walk and afterwards and in dinner it's it was really really so fulfilling and so much learning in that and um yes and of course the the mentoring and the mental coaching and the training we did on the program was just fantastic i think so um yeah it was a great a great experience and and as you were saying also not to be always online to be actually seeing each other walking together mm -hmm. eating together it's just wonderful mm -hmm. it is a little bit more expensive yes but it was totally worth it mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. i just want to wanted you. to share that that i think you succeeded really with what you just said thank yeah. you yeah thank you for pointing that out and if i may add something as or uh in, in what you said uh nina is when you're meeting in person, one thing that it's been that we miss in the online world is the tacit knowledge that's been created in all the informal gatherings and exchange of reflections and ideas, which are which are not being triggered by the training itself, but by the agenda of the trainers, but but the uh, somehow subconscious agenda of everyone who is participating just there in the moment because it's important to them. And mm -hmm. as they are expressing that, it creates a free flowing invitation to any other who is available in their uh, in in their company to exchange what is happening. And together they're creating more and more knowledge, which is very, very important according to their own agenda as, as it's being created in organically. Yes. And I will also add that uh, my intention when I joined the program was not actually to go for MCC, not at this point. I just wanted to, I just realized I can, I can always become better. It's like you said, many of you, it's a journey. And then I'll see what I'll do with it. Right now, I'm not ready. I don't have everything else that, that I need to get it become an MCC. But I think it was a great investment. Uh, so um, we'll see, we'll see if I do that yeah. in Sweden. It's not so, I know in the US, you have lots of MCC coaches in Sweden, you don't. So it's another it's another scenario, I guess, but we'll see. But it was always I love to learn. And again, these this crowd of people was just amazing, fantastic. So many talented coaches, such a high level of everything. OK, um, so when when you think about your own journey here and to mastery, what what where are you if I ask the participants here? How are you reflecting on your own mastery? Mm. Who wants to share something? And I guess that there's a question there about um, would it be uh, more enjoyable to go into a breakout for five minutes and share? I don't know. What do you think, group? 
I don't mind sharing. Um, it's a small enough group. I don't necessarily need to go to a breakout, but I think for me, I'm kind of at a crossroads of what I want to do with my coaching. Um, as I think about kind of the next phase of my life, do I want to continue coaching? Um, because right now I'm an internal coach, but do I want to build that that uh, focus of coaching others outside the organization? So you need a certain level of mastery to do that. Um, I know um, I'm not uncertain that I don't have that. I was just a whether, I think it's more of a whether I want to do that. I have to figure that out. Thank you for um, sharing that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Anything else you wanted to say? No, that was it. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Anne. Anyone else wants to share? Where are you on your mastering journey? No. Okay. Okay. So then, I'll well, ask, yeah. Well, that yeah. I I would say that that might just be a an open question mm. for it to uh, to think about. You know, and I think about my own um, level of mastery. I will say that I have some really excellent, terrible coaching sessions, and I have the ability and the capability to be masterful. And so going back to this idea of co-creation, I think that, that um, you know, it is how we set this up with our clients in terms of what is possible. And it is about what our clients are hiring us to do, um, whether it's coaching in this, in, in a place of mastery, or is it um, are they really looking for a, a mentor? Are they looking for an advisor um, or some sort of a blend? It is about how we flexibly and emergently bring ourselves to that session. And so for me and my own level of mastery, I think that, um, um, yes, there is always room for feedback and improvement. And in fact, Angelos and I just dislike we ask others, we put up our own videos and say, could you please give us a little bit of a critique of what's going on, what you see and what you don't see? Um, uh, yeah. And the um, and it is the idea, do I have the capability to bring myself in the way that we're talking about around mastery? And do I do it consistently? And in the places where I get triggered or where I get gummed up, those are places that I get to do my own work. That's where I hire my own coach or I do my own personal growth. Um, and so that is a continuing process for me. Yeah, and, and if I may add, as I was mm -hmm. listening the question from Nina twice, I felt compelled to answer myself because, okay, regardless of the fact that I have the ICF MCC credential and a number of other credentials, and I I am also am accredited supervisor, but I, um, I I formally in, engage in supervision sessions, not uh, in in the role of delivering supervision, but also in receiving supervision for my own practice. And uh, so, and training and all these things are very, very helpful uh, for me as well, professionally. That helps me uh, evolve. Actually, I believe that uh, uh, with with the right um, with the right process, with a, with the right um, place and space to process what is happening after a number of coaching sessions, you get to learn more about who you are and many more ideas of what you can become or create. And um, I am intentional from time to time in providing this kind of luxury or service in my own professional development, uh, taking care about myself. I think taking care about 
ourselves as professionals is very, very important. So I find this like a really great offer. Um, I, I, I have made it um, a commitment to myself in, in all these last years to um, search, inquire and find the right opportunity for me to engage with the right cohort, with the right people, with the right trainers to engage in some kind of a continuous development and and I think that's a, it's not a typical obligation that I have uh, towards ICF or the MCC but also um, for my own self and I really appreciate that it's me time <laughs> it's me time <laughs> yeah, that's great that's a great definition of me time because it really is it really really is the days we had together it's me time <laughs> So I'm um, conscious of time here and we want to open up for, for questions, but um, uh, now when you've done the first module, is what would you like to keep and what would you like to change in the next one? Well, we have um, in this year's program, we've only done the first module and then some of the distance learning. So this next module will be in June in Albuquerque and the next one will be in October in Niagara Falls. So our answers might be really different in a couple of months. Um, but what it feels like um, we've learned so far is that um, diversity, and you can share Angelos, diversity of participants is really key. Um, we have folks from different parts of the world. Uh, you know, um, I will preface that by saying that most of us, myself included, most of us, when we've taken original coaching, our original coaching programs, um, were in the program with other people who didn't know much about coaching, and we're all beginning the process. And then, speaking for myself, I went on and took. Um, programs that I got CCEs or continuing education credits to keep renewing my credential. And so uh, a shift for this kind of a program, which is pretty, I think, is dis a distinctive practice that we would continue to do is really try and bring in a wonderful diversity of participants from different parts of the world that have had different, co gone to different coaching schools have done um, have are from different walks of life, so that the, it's not this program that we designed is not about here's a set of skills we're going to teach them to you. It is about being um, open and, and emergent to also the various different people that come in and to learn from one another. And I would absolutely keep that. And I think that that's one thing that's pretty distinctive about this program. You can, yeah. Um, Angelus, do you want to talk about some of these or shall I keep going? Yeah, we can both do that. Um, I can start and then you can continue or. Sure. Um, yes, yes, offer different, um, yes, choices. Uh, foster choice, that's important. That, and as Melissa said earlier, when we, when, you, when, when a coach is starting the, their training, they're all coming from, more or less the same point. When you're coaching advanced professionals, they are come with already things that they know, things that they know, they think they know, things that they don't know they know, and the different approaches as well for different for uh, for the same challenges and same clients or similar clients. So the this exchange is important, uh, but but we also want to. Um, um, give choice uh, uh, and to make that be emergence as we grow. So we have designed that to be something which has been unfolding organically throughout the program. And we give the opportunity and the support for anyone. Uh, and we invite everyone to include that in their development, in their study and in what they're sharing with other coaches. Something like a university major, uh, studying something which is very important, relevant to them in their course, in their professional, um, in the professional, um, in, in, in their professionalism and how they are, uh, what they are, want, where they want to become better and choosing the, this as a, 
as a major. And uh, we want this to be, so, as uh, Marisa said earlier, yes, you want to yeah, say I just something wanted to, here. Yeah, I wanted to say something about the major from the perspective of, just to give an, a couple of examples, we, you know, that um, somebody said, gosh, I'm an external coach and I really, really, really want to do some more around leadership development. I'd like to start working in organizations. And so that's the major that that person's choosing. Somebody else said, um, I've just done a whole bunch of workshops on trauma and I live in the part of the world where trauma is really prevalent um, in terms of what's going on in the world. And so I want to do trauma-informed coaching. And so the the way in which people get to bring themselves is to to, to declare how how is it that that this work will unfold in you, or do you, do you want to explore how it could unfold in you, and then make that your major, as opposed to us saying, here's the set of things that you must learn. We half of the program is around figuring out where it is that the person wants to spend more of their time learning. And that's a very distinctive practice. We haven't found that in the market research that we've done. We haven't found that in other programs. And I think people are really appreciating that uh, there's a choice about where to spend the time that they're spending in this program. So that's something distinctive that I would keep, keep doing. And Angels, I cut over you and I did not mean to. No problem. And we want to make this uh, serious and fun and supportive and challenging. And I think we have uh, based to go back to the question with Nina from Nina. Uh, what will you keep on doing? I think we will keep on doing what we have been doing because it looks like it's working so well because as we have been with each other in companies, uh, we have met formally for uh, for five consecutive days uh, in uh, in Naranda, in the hotel that we have uh, um, chosen, but we kept on meeting each other in Malaga afterwards. So that means this thing was very serious and fun. There was a bond that has been created, and um, I think it works. Mm-hmm. And we want to keep on doing that. It's about the energy in my perception. What do you think, Melissa? What is what it is that we're doing that works? Yeah, well. yeah, I I agree with you, and I don't want this to be a sales pitch. What I want this to be is to say these are the things that work. So as you decide for your own self, everybody, um, what what's next for you? Um, these these are the things that our our folks um, report out that has been really meaningful. So look for ways that you can do some of these things so that you can experience it for yourself. Um, so look for programs that have, these are some of the distinctive practices we've discovered. And the invitation is for you to find um, ways that you can bring yourself that are serious and fun, supportive and challenging, where you can have your own choice and where you can immerse yourself in the content um, and with people from all over the world. No. Can, I, can I ask Nina from her yeah. experience, what do you think that we should be, keep on doing? No, like <laughs> you said, but I was just reading the last last sentence there with uh, fun and uh, uh, engage, engaging, and uh, we and, and like you said, we keep meeting each other, we we're WhatsApping each other, and I just get a big smile on my face when I think of all these participants. It was just a, an amazing crowd. So. So yes, I think you really succeeded with everything. I know we had some challenges with the food at some point. I know you <laughs> did, but we learned, we learned about that, right? Or you That's learned right. about that. <laughs> That's something that you can you can uh, can sort out in time, right? Small pro- small problems. Yeah. The behind the scenes yeah. of that is that yeah. food. I am a foodie, and I food is yeah. really important to me. Yeah. I, it's really important that people get to eat things that they. Uh, fit into their various different diets and that it's beautiful and lovely. And so um, we had to do some scrambling behind the scenes to make that true for all of the different diets um, so that everybody gets to have something beautiful and yummy. That's great. 
So anything else you would like to share before I pass on the question here to the participants, if you have any questions? Um, if I can, I know that we have said where we scheduled to go this year, uh, but because mm -hmm. we have already designed what we'll be doing for the next cohort, we have somehow reshuffled the cards. So maybe I can uh, quickly share my screen again and, and show that what, what we have uh, planned is uh, the first re retreat to be uh, next June 2025, Niagara Falls, then October in Albuquerque, and then March 26. 2026 in uh, Ronda, Spain again. So that would be um, a slightly different schedule. Mm -hmm. And though I'll just make a plug, we were talking about maybe switching one of those out and coming to Greece, but we're still working yeah. on whether that's possible. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so questions. Who has a question? For Melissa and Angelos. And Angelos, you can stop share so we can see folks. Yeah, maybe not just questions, but maybe comments as well would, would, yeah. be, would be nice to have. Yeah. Either something about what you're discovering as we're talking about this for your own self or. Um, other distinctive practices that you'd like to bring in that have been particularly useful for your um, learning and um, um, experience in your in your coaching. Thoughts around mastery. Or what's just happening for you as you sit here right now? I see a lot of people who are ready to click the unmute their microphone. <laughs> Hovering over the unmute button. <laughs> no, okay. nobody wants to say anything. OK, well. And welcome to the new ones yeah. that yeah. have just opened their camera. I think Athena has raised her hand. Oh, yes, Athena wants to say something. But you are on the mute, Athena. Yes, you were going to hear that. All right. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if my camera is open because I have some problems with the camera. Anyway, I would like to first of all thank you, thank you all for today, and because we are new coaches, let's say we are under five years, most of us here, the new ones. Um, uh, if I would put a word behind the coaching mastery for me, it has two two meanings. One in the lexicon will be Angelos de Lopez because he's my teacher. And every time I think of coaching mastery, I'm, I, there's two things I do. I'm afraid if I will uh, reach it. And then I'm, I'm encouraged because he encourages me. So uh, the one thing in the lexicon before, behind, uh, behind the word uh, mastery is Angelos de Lopez. And the other, the other uh, word that I, the other uh, phrase that I will put in is that I don't know why, but I think that uh, when I reach at the level of coaching mastery, it will reflect on my clients. Mm. I will see my clients blooming, and then I will see the, the um, uh, I will see with my eyes my coaching mastery blooming in front of me. That's what I'm thinking, okay? And I would would like to have more time with all of you because you're like coaching mastery for everybody of us, <laughs> okay? Um, uh, but I'm very grateful for today. Thank you very much, all of you. Uh, I wish we could have like once a week, once a month with all of you uh, in, listening to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Athena, for sharing those beautiful words. Yes, uh, I see now we're on top of the hour. So if you need to leave, we understand absolutely. Thank you very uh, much. You can Thank you. Put in the chat uh, if you 
uh, anything what you're walking away with was was the most insightful from this this hour here uh, but we'll stay here for those who want and i would love to ask margaret you wanted to say something <laughs> i'm not used to um but i just want to say that um i i think the idea of changing the ground and the what your environment uh, is so critical to uh, personal growth. I mean, and the travel um, idea is is fantastic. I'm just, um, and of course, there are many places like to go. Um, these places are great that you've you've listed, and um, and I think you're you're just launching or starting and experimenting. Um, uh, so I'm curious about. What is the diversity that you've been able to get thus far? And how many are in Nina's crowd that she loves <laughs> to be in contact with on WhatsApp? Uh, so the crowd is an intentionally small. Um, we we have eight, eight people and um, and then Angelos and myself. And, and that's for, I think, obvious attention details. Um, and I'm sorry, Margaret, that was the second question. The first question was what? Just, um, well, I, I think that's, that's the main thing. I mean, I, I actually didn't want to take a lot of time because we wanted to give yeah. other people space. Um, yeah, and, and so real it's diversity. an intentionally yeah. small group and the diversity. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we have, um, in, in Malaga, we had people from India, uh, Europe and the United States. And then that it's also possible to attend one of the retreats and not the others. And so in Albuquerque, we have a great, by Sanjay, uh, we have a great the uh, co uh, cohort of people that were in um, Spain in uh, Ronda. And then we have a few more joining from uh, the United States. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Okay. So if there aren't any more questions, I guess we're going to say bye bye. And if you have any more questions, you know, you can just uh, contact Melissa or Angelos. And we thank you so much for being here today. And we will stay here if you want to have any other, if you have any other questions. So we'll, we'll be stay uh, until we're the last ones in this room. Great. So you're. <laughs> thank you, Nina. Thank you, Margaret. Nice to see you all. Thank, thank you. you all very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.